بهالحلقه رح نتعرف على القاضي جيمس كادو وهو من ابرز القضاة بلوس انجلوس رح يخبرنا عن سيرته المهنيه وسيرته الذاتيه بهالانترفيو خلينا نكتشف عنه اكثر Judge James Cado, uh, thank you for uh, receiving us in your beautiful house here in Los Angeles. Thank it's you. It's a great pleasure to be with you. Ahlo sahla fiki el bed beite. Thank you. And uh, we thank you for this uh, visit and uh, for being uh, so kind as to uh, have a conversation with us. It's uh, a great pleasure. Uh, I know that you were born in Zrata in Lebanon. And you went to school uh, in Tripoli at the College des Frères. Uh, tell us more about how you spent your childhood till the age of 14 when you uh, traveled to the United States. In life, the things happen by accident more than on purpose. Uh, my mother, who was born in the United States, left this country and went back to Zarta. And after the Second World War, she wanted to come back to the United States. And uh, she came back with my brother and sister because they were under 10 years old. Uh, I was over 10 years old. So I stayed uh, with my father in Zgharta until my mother came here. And in about four years, she was able to uh, proceed with the paperwork to bring us here. And I came after being separated uh, from her for about four years with my father, and we came straight to Los Angeles. What do you remember from uh, Zrarta and uh, Tripoli, knowing that you are very attached to your uh, roots? Uh, it's not a question of what you remember. Uh, once you live in Zrarta, you keep on living. You never leave it. You never have to remember it. Uh, I remember there were hard times in Zrarta. Uh, I'm talking in the, in the 40s. Uh, but the most beautiful thing about Zgharta is it taught you about life, mm -hmm. it taught you about courage, it taught you about having ambitions, uh, and it taught you not to be afraid. Uh, I came to this country not speaking a word of English. I was put with my age group. I finished high school. In three months, I don't know how I did it, but I was speaking English to the point where everybody thought I was American. Uh, in fact, to this day, everybody thinks I'm American. I don't look Lebanese, uh, although I'm Lebanese to the marrow of my bone. <laughs> uh, after high school, I uh, decided I want to go to college because uh, I had a grandfather who would never have dinner unless I was seated in his lap. And he always told me, Ya Jiddi al Alam. Uh, so I had always yeah. thought of myself as going to college. It was something Very that important. was inbred in me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I left Los Angeles. I uh, went to the University of California mm -hmm. at Berkeley, which is close to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And my ambition was really to go into the foreign service. So I majored in uh, political okay. science and international relations. I graduated in those majors, uh, and unfortunately, uh, the Army, the United States Army, still had a draft system. Mm -hmm. And since I had graduated college, I did not have any more exemptions, so I was drafted uh, into the American Army. And uh, I thought it was a very, very dark day in my life. Uh, was it a good experience to but be? But as I look back on it, uh, it was beautiful experience. Uh, it made you appreciate life. I didn't go into a war. I stayed in the, in the continental United States. I served two years in the Army uh, up in uh, Washington State. And then I decided that I was going to go into the Foreign Service. 
1958, when I was ready to be discharged from the Army, orders came from Washington to place a hold on my discharge from the Army. I didn't understand why. Right. 1958, uh, President Eisenhower had decided to send American troops into Lebanon because of the communist growth in Iraq and Iran, and they knew I was Lebanese-born, mm -hmm. that I spoke Arabic, and they wanted to send me with the American troops. And uh, as much as I appreciate serving my country, I didn't want to be in the Army one day, then I had to. So uh, I applied for the Foreign Service, but at the same time, I applied for admission to the school. law school uh -huh. of the University of Southern California as Plan B. And as it turned out, we also had the first civil war in Lebanon in about 1958. And uh, they were doing background check on me both in this country and in Lebanon. And they wanted to interview my grandparents, my aunts, my uncles. The Cato family is rather large. We mm. are a tribe. We're more than a family. <laughs> uh, because of the war and, and the presidency of President Kamil Shamaroun, my family had left Beirut and went back to Zgharta. Mm -hmm. And then they could not contact. Mm. By the time they came back to me with approval to join the mm -hmm. Foreign Service, I had done finished six months of law school, and I decided I only have two and a half more years, I might so as well finish it. Be. So I stayed in law school. And it's a good thing today. And then I became an attorney. You are a brilliant uh, judge, and you are the first uh, Lebanese-born American judge. That's, uh, that's correct. It's one of the things that I'm truly proud of uh, is that it appealed to me. I had a very prosperous uh, law office, uh, I was very successful because I loved the law uh, and I loved people and being of service to people because the law is a profession that takes care of people who mm -hmm. are in trouble. Mm -hmm. If you don't have legal problems, you don't go to an attorney. Of course. Uh, and what attracted me to becoming a judge was the fact that I was the first Lebanese-born American judge. We have many judges of Lebanese descent, but they yeah, are born not, in this country. Not uh, born and in Lebanon. I, I, I want to ask to you about, about your years in, uh, at the uh, university, at the law school. Um, you, were, you were devoted and passionate for this uh, the, uh, career, yeah. or uh, was it just a, a choice, a decision you took? You cannot be a good lawyer if you don't love passionately the law. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, one of the great judges had a saying that's in most of the law schools in this country, and the saying is, the law is a jealous mistress. <laughs> Which means that if you don't love the law passionately, you're going to be a terrible lawyer. Uh, I love the law. I love the service that it rendered to helping people who are in trouble. Uh, and if you love the law, then you're very happy at what you're doing, and that mm -hmm. means more than money. في أول هالحلقة تعرفنا على القاضى جيمس كادو ولد بزغرتا من أب لبناني وأم لبنانية أمريكية والتحق بعائلته بالولايات المتحدة كان عمره تقريبا 16 سنة خلينا نعرف أكثر عن بداياته بالمحاماة بلوس أنجلوس من بعد هل I understood that you created your own law firm at I, a very uh, at a young age, and which has been like uh, now for 27 mm -hmm. years active for 27 it was, years. It's actually more than 27 years. In uh, uh, 1964, I realized that I could not go work for a law firm, <laughs> uh, so I decided something that I consider very foolish. 
But then if you don't risk, if you don't take risks in life, you also don't succeed. Of course. Uh, I decided to have my own law firm, and uh, I did, and I stayed in private practice with my own law firm for 27 years until uh, 1990, when uh, Governor Duke Mejian, who was a personal friend uh, and uh, appreciated very much what the Lebanese community in Southern California did for him throughout his political career mm -hmm. and really wanted to honor the community and he considered me to be one of the more prominent members of the Lebanese community. Uh, he uh, told me that he wants to appoint me to, uh, to be a judge. To go ahead and put in my application, and, and that's what I did. Yeah. You were appointed first in 1991 and then re elected uh, every six years yes. till uh, today. Yes, a judge in California uh, is elected every six years. Initially, uh, you are uh, you're elected every six years, but initially, you are appointed. And it is a, uh, you're appointed as an honor in appreciation mm -hmm. of something that you have done politically. Mm -hmm. And I was Republican, Governor Duke Majin, just like President Reagan uh, were Republicans. As a matter of fact, Governor Duke Majin was highly respected by President Reagan. And it just was too attractive to, be, to say I'm the first Lebanese-born American judge, and I, I'm still very proud of it. Of course, we are all proud of that. What are the qualities of a, of a good judge, uh, and what are his responsibilities? First and foremost, you've already touched on it a little bit, you have to love the law. And if you love the law, you, be, you will become a good judge. What you need, however, to be a good judge is, number one, an intellect, number two, good education in the law, Number three, compassion and sympathy for the people who come before you. Mm -hmm. Being a judge is being understanding, wanting or needing to listen to both sides of the equation, and being sincerely interested in solving people's problems. Mm -hmm. What you have before you as a judge are disputes. Of course. And these are serious disputes. Some of them involve putting people in jail. Some of them involve, if you do divorce work, taking children away from their parents. Uh, a judge can do something that a president of the United States cannot do. I can put people in jail. I can take somebody. You can even put a president in jail. And they, they almost did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, it is a noble, noble, profession, uh, but you cannot be just without being compassionate. Mm. At the same time, you cannot rule or you cannot decide cases with your heart. You, have you can to, be as sympathetic, as yeah. compassionate as possible, but the law is the law and you have to treat everybody equally, no matter which way your sympathy may be. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a very hard job. Indeed. Did you ever uh, regret a, a judgment you did or you thought about it twice, thinking you, you had the, the wrong uh, decision? I honestly do not regret any of the decisions that I have made. And I did, I was doing criminal cases for, for two or three years. Uh, I love civil cases more because in civil cases, all you deal with is money. You can either take the money or give somebody money. In criminal cases, it left more of a emotional mm. uh, sadness in me because I put somebody away in jail for 80 years and was 40, 45 years old. Uh, that stayed with me. I had, slept, I had trouble sleeping that night. Mm. In civil cases, I don't have that worry. In civil mm. cases, I, I, I feel I make the right decisions. Mm. Uh, I'm seldom wrong. If I'm wrong, there's an appellate court that looks uh, again. Uh, at my cases, and that's, that happens very, very seldom. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel very comfortable with my cases because I don't give a judgment very lightly. Mm -hmm. I, I study it, I think about it seriously, 
And mostly I think about the litigants and the attorneys who come before mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. are entitled, are entitled to my best effort and my reasoned opinion and a just decision. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would like to give them. Mm -hmm. Are the um, rights of a Lebanese American citizen the same uh, as the pure American citizen? What's beautiful about America, and it comes with a price, is that <laughs> not only are all Americans equally treated and equal in the, under the law, but even foreigners, illegal aliens, people who are here without a visa or without papers, so long as they are on American soil, are treated equally as American citizens. Mm -hmm. uh, America takes pride in its legal system. Uh, and my humble opinion is the judiciary, in other words, the legal system is the cement that makes this democracy great. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are blessed because the Americans and those litigants who come before me are convinced once they have a fair hearing that the judgment is a fair judgment. They may not agree with me because in my business, I can't make both sides happy. Mm -hmm. One party has to lose one party has to win. But what's gratifying is that both walk away from my courtroom convinced that they had a fair chance, that they had a fair judge, that I gave my best judgment according to the evidence that was brought before me. And that's very rewarding for a judge. And it's also a great compliment to this democracy that is America, mm -hmm. that we have a system where the law sometimes may be violated, but will be obeyed. And what is the importance of uh, rules and regulations and law in democracy? The importance is, first of all, the people know that they have rights. They also know that there is a system in this democracy anyway, that there is a system that protects your rights. and there are courts that ensure that if you bring the right evidence that you will be rewarded by your rights being awarded to you. There is no fear that if you have rights, you're going to get those rights. And this works at least 90%, maybe 99% of the time, because no system that is created by humans is perfect. Of course. But there is this deep belief among the American people that this system, the judicial system, works. And it does work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes a long time, and sometimes it's expensive. But the system does work, including, including the jury system, which is uh, unique for the United States and for uh, Great Britain, the Anglo-Saxon system. It's a very expensive system, uh, but it does work because the philosophical reason that the founding fathers of this country had is that it is better for you to be judged by members of your community, by your peers, by your next door neighbors, by the people that you see every day, than to be judged by experts. Mm -hmm. It's a hard system. It's hard for the attorneys, and it's an expensive system. It costs a lot. In Los Angeles, we need 10,000 jurors a day oh my God. for our various courts. So we have a jury That's system a where you you ask people to come to court to serve as jurors, mm -hmm. take them away from their regular everyday life. And because you're being judged by your neighbors, uh, there's more of a confidence in the result. 
not all cases are decided by juries. A lot of, many cases, uh, they would want judges to, dis to, but the jury system is unique to this country and, and it's a great uh, compliment to the founding fathers that this is the kind of uh, justice that they selected for the American citizens. Yeah, of course. And what is the difference between the law system in America and the law system in Lebanon? I or I've already mentioned one. We have a jury system which is unique to the Anglo-Saxon mm -hmm. countries. The also, uh, as you know, I go back to Lebanon every year yeah. for about a month, month and a half. So I'm very familiar uh, with the Lebanese judicial system. Uh, the other major difference is that the judicial system in this country is a independent third branch of government. This democracy, this American democracy, this great experiment in human governing has three branches, three pillars that support it. The executive, mm -hmm. the legislative, and the judicial. All three branches, according to our constitution, are equal. So the judges are no less than the senators mm -hmm. or even the president of the United States. And we are treated equally. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have the last word. We, we can judge a president. Uh, so that is a very important difference. The other important difference is because the judiciary is so important to the democracy, we have very, very strict supervision. Mm, which doesn't exist in we have We have, uh, we have uh, citizens and judges who sit on uh, commissions that judge our performance. And no matter how unfounded an accusation may be, you must address it. If somebody comes to my court and sends a letter to me, I have to send it to my supervising judge, and the letter says, Judge Cato was not fair to me. I think he was biased against me. Mm -hmm. I think he's, he's Lebanese, and because he's Lebanese, he ruled against me. That letter, I have to answer it. Okay. And not only I have to answer it, I have to give it to my supervising judge. My supervising judge has to answer the letter saying, I've given your letter to Judge Cato, and he's going to answer you. Mm -hmm. Now, there's also a commission that sits and, and is, has power to judge me. If I did something really wrong, they could give me a public reprimand, which means it's put in the media. They could give me a private reprimand, or I could even be removed Fine. as a judge. Uh, and we're very mindful of these things as judges. So the citizens have a way to redress uh, I'm grateful that there has never been any uh, foundation for some accusations, but the system is there, mm -hmm. is there, and it's and it's followed. Mm -hmm. And and I have to give every every complaint that I get the respect, and I have to answer it. I don't have the luxury of being upset. I understand. You can be accused. As a matter of fact, I think judges have less rights than the citizens mm -hmm. because we are placed with a heavier burden. Mm -hmm. uh, and these are very important factors, and I don't think they exist in other countries. No. They don't exist Especially in other not countries. In Lebanon. Plus, state judges such as myself uh, are elected every six years. Every six years. So uh, sometimes there are attorneys who get so mad at judges that they decide to run against them. And then it you know, becomes a matter of the, of the people uh, electing you. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is the last resort. Mm -hmm. That is the last resort. But it's also very, very rewarding. I think by becoming a judge, I've extended my life by about at least 20 years. I love what I'm doing yeah. because I leave my court and I leave all my headaches in court. And you come back home to And I come family. back home and I relax. Yeah. And you think about Zgharta. <laughs> and I think about Zgharta and how, how soon am I going to go <laughs> to there? Lebanon. I, uh, I know that you are very active uh, socially. I know um, that 
I would like you to talk about the activities of the Lebanese diaspora in Los Angeles. Uh, and you, I know you have uh, created and you are president of many uh, organizations. The, uh, the Lebanese community in, in Southern California is, is very, very old. I think they started, you know, all, all the immigrants started in Ellis Island and in New York. Uh, then they started coming west, first in the Midwest. Uh, and the Lebanese community started in the maybe 20s or 30s. It's an old community. But because they have such a long distance to cover, it didn't grow uh, in numbers until later in years. But uh, when I became a lawyer, I had uh, a, a ambition to try and unite the community as much as possible uh, because we were a minority among minorities. Mm -hmm. uh, and the American system demands participation. So. Uh, I always wanted to either create organizations or, or join organizations that already exist to bring us together and participate in the political process, participate in social life, participate in charitable uh, endeavors. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, have I was either president or a member of the board of all all the Lebanese Amazing. organizations, some of them I've even, I was a founder, and I was, I even expanded. I went beyond just Lebanese community, the Arab American community in general. Uh, I was spokesman uh, for the Arab cause, for the Palestinian cause, and I certainly was a spokesman for the Lebanese cause when Israel uh, invaded uh, Lebanon, and I was very, very active um, and, uh, I brought, I was successful to, to a great extent mm -hmm. until the Lebanese Civil War of 1975, at which time, uh, because of the distance, and unfortunately the Lebanese echoed and mirrored the division in Lebanon instead of being unifying. Mm -hmm. But that's the way human beings react. Uh, I know that I've, you have founded, sorry, you have founded also the Arab American uh, Bar. Uh, I, was, I was very, very proud to, from a professional standpoint when I was a lawyer, that I formed the Arab American uh, Bar Association, mm -hmm. which is still uh, very active, and they were kind enough uh, to uh, vote a uh, annual Judge James Cato Award that is given every year to a prominent uh, Lebanese lawyer, American Lebanese lawyer, who has dedicated mm -hmm. uh, his efforts not only to the legal profession but also to serve the community. Those are the qualification to get uh, to get this yeah. award, and I'm very very proud of it. Uh, the other thing that I'm very very proud of is that for 12 years we have been raising funds to create a community center, a cultural center mm -hmm. for the Lebanese community. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm very proud that after 12 years, we have raised sufficient funds, greater funds than any other organization that I know of, and we purchased a building right on Wilshire Boulevard, which is a main commercial boulevard in Los Angeles, about uh, five minutes from my house, uh, that is going to be our cultural center. Beautiful. Lebanese community is, is very, very active and very organized, the difficulty is in keeping them together. Even and here in, in the in United Los States? In Los Angeles, yes, and more so. I think that the distance from Lebanon to here uh, makes it grow bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like an echo. The echo starts with a small voice. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm also very proud that they all respect me. Uh, I don't have any enemies. Uh, they don't agree with me but they listen to me. Mm, which is and uh, I'm proud that my life in this community as a judge and before that as a lawyer, even more so as a lawyer, because as a judge I'm limited, I cannot get involved politically. Uh, but as a lawyer, uh, I'm very, very proud that I was a unifying influence, not a divisive influence. Mm -hmm. And that's 
that's something of benefit to the community and of course great emotional satisfaction of course to me of course and uh, is there a big uh, a high percentage of uh, Lebanese American lawyers in Los Angeles we have uh, we have quite a f we have quite a few of them uh, I don't know the numbers exactly. I know that the Bar Association that I formed has about 100 members. Mm -hmm. uh, there are other Lebanese lawyers who don't participate in the community. They've become too Americanized. Mm -hmm. And part of my job is, as a judge, if I see a name, a last name that I recognize as Lebanese, I call uh -huh. and I, I uh, tell them that there is an organization that's uh, made up of Lebanese and Arab Americans. It's a bar association, it's a professional association. Uh, try to get them involved. Mm -hmm. And that's, that was a problem generally in the uh, community at large. The Lebanese have a habit of assimilating too well. Too well. Uh, it took a great deal of work to finally get them to come out and say, I am Lebanese. And there's one great Lebanese that we owe an eternal, eternal debt to, and that's a man by the name of Danny Thomas. Mm -hmm. yeah, Danny Thomas course. put well, Lebanon on the map yeah, in the United who found, States. Founded uh, Saint Jude. He is yes, he, and actually he, Saint Jude uh, was founded here in Los Angeles. أسس جيمس كادو شركته للمحامات الخاصة فيه وبرز اسمه بهالمجال بالولايات المتحدة وكان أول قاضي بيخلق بلبنان أمريكي بهالمجال بلوس أنجلوس رح نتعرف أكثر على جيمس كادو الأب من بعد هالبريك Let's talk about uh, your, your personal life and uh, your family uh, uh, also. I know that during um, your studies at the law firm, you left to, to, uh, to Lebanon, yes. uh, you escaped to Lebanon, and uh, uh, <coughs> you, you met, uh, not you met, uh, your wife is a relative, yes. and you, you got married and you came, you came back. Tell us more about this uh, well, story. Well, after my first year of law school, I really miss Lebanon, and my, all of my grandparents were still alive, my aunts, uncles, you know, the whole Cato tribe. Uh, I, I honestly wanted to go back to Lebanon. So I left and I went back to Lebanon, and uh, then I realized that I had become too American, uh, that I believed in asl uh, al-fata fa'lu. I believed that you, sh you should accomplish in life on the merits and on your ability not on who you know and what your connection is. So uh, I met, I didn't meet, I was raised with my wife. Uh, we are actually her grandfather and my grandmother were sisters. I was raised, we were raised almost together. So, uh, and she was beautiful. She still is. And she still is, and uh, <laughs> that's one of the pleasures in life. I married her and we came back, and then I decided I'd go back finished law school, mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't uh, so easy because now I had, I had a wife to take care of, mm -hmm. so I worked and went to law school, mm -hmm. uh, slept about two hours a night, but uh, that was sufficient for me because now I have an obligation. Of course, and, I do. Uh, have God blessed us yeah, with, uh, four, with four, daughters. four beautiful daughters mm -hmm. uh, and uh, even blessed us more with five five beautiful grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Two of my grandchildren are here in Los Angeles. They live with me. And uh, three grandchildren uh, live in Lebanon. Uh, two, one of them is now at AUB. The other one graduated AUB, the oldest. And the third grandchild, who's named after me, Jimmy. Is he uh, in Zulu or not he, yet? No, he's, uh, I don't know where he's gonna go yet, <laughs> but he's at the University of Balamand uh, mm -hmm. in, in the north. Uh, and it gave me 
a dilemma because it's difficult to live on half a heart in Los Angeles and, half a heart and the ha Canada. other half in Zrata. Uh, so I suffer a lot until I go back every summer. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to see if you are overwhelmed with uh, your daughter's love because I know a father is always attached to his daughter and girls are attached to their father. Uh, is it a special relationship you have with your daughters? Well, I've never, I've treated my daughters as my friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, I loved them, but I didn't know how much I could love. I thought I loved them as much as I can love any, any human being mm -hmm. until I had grandkids. <laughs> when, when grandkids, <laughs> in fact, I have a, in my court, uh, in my chambers, my private uh, office, uh, I have a pillow that I had inscribed on it uh, that if I knew that grandchildren were so much fun, I would have had them first. <laughs> uh, so it's the, quite impossible. <laughs> all the love that you have and true that your father had for his daughters, just right. like the love that I have for my daughters, which is unequal uh, uh, until I had grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And then it's a totally different world. I don't know what it is. I have ideas. I think when you have grandchildren, you're downhill to the end. Mm -hmm. And I think perhaps you kind of project and you want to attach more to them because to, to you, mentally and emotionally, they represent the youth that yeah. you used to be. Yeah, you look, up, uh, you look at them like you see yourself. I, like I look at them and I don't, long, I don't get enough yes, of them. I mean, I, yeah, I, yeah. You, you, but you have, you said you have grandchildren here in, in Los Angeles and three of them are in Lebanon. Lebanon. You, you don't, do you encourage your, your uh, grandchildren in Lebanon to come to, to, to the United States? Oh yes, I have one of my... Uh, or you, you they prefer come, they, they come, stay there? No, 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 they come, they come, they're American citizens, first mm -hmm. of all, because mm -hmm. they all have, they, they were all uh, given, I, they got American passports. Uh, secondly, my, my uh, oldest grandson, Antoine, after he finished, graduated from AUB, he came here and uh, did, did a year, got a master's in business administration, uh, and they, you know, they come and go frequently. Mm -hmm. But so, they don't think about coming and staying. I think they have a much better life in Lebanon. Do you envy them? No. No. I miss them. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, uh, they have a father who's exemplary, uh, who has raised them properly and raised them lavishly. Uh, if they ask for the moon, it'll be there the next day. <laughs> uh, I have... Uh, never as dedicated as I was uh, as, a, uh, as a father. Uh, he is very parallel, very parallel to me, if not exceeding. Mm -hmm. and, and they're beautiful children. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful children. You know, there are a lot of Lebanese who are uh, immigrating from Lebanon, uh, seeking opportunities around the world, a lot in the United States. Is it a good thing uh, to come and foresee uh, and seek for opportunities, or is it uh, maybe a bad thing to leave Lebanon? And you know, I anticipated, and I've been thinking for a couple of days because I know she's going to ask me this question. <laughs> yeah. uh, the Lebanese mentality and humanity is, uh, and I'm not, I'm not being. I'm not bragging about because I'm Lebanese. There is something unique about the Lebanese in the character of the Lebanese. Uh, the Lebanese character is very entrepreneurial. Uh, they know how to sacrifice. They know how to defer pleasure for the sake of future enjoyment. Mm -hmm. And they are courageous and go where no one has dared to go. Recently, I had, just last year, I had the honor of being awarded the Ellis Island Medal of Honor. It's, a, it's, a, uh, it's an award to recognize immigrants who have distinguished themselves as Americans. And I was honored with that medal. 
And I went to Ellis Island and I saw they still have the baggage that our forefathers came with to this country stacked on top of each other. And I was thinking to myself, how courageous. They were. You know, I had a grandfather who came to this country, came through Ellis Island. That's how my mother was born in America. How courageous. It's like going to the moon. Imagine coming on a ship from Beirut. Uh, couldn't speak, don't speak the language. Come to a country that you've never seen before. You don't know what you're facing. Mm -hmm. And they, had, they were brave intelligent, daring, of course. and succeeded. And that character in the Lebanese personality, I think we have inherited, it's in our genes, it's in our blood. Uh, so we always take risks, but they're calculated yeah. risk. And even when we fail, we don't stay down, we get up again. Mm -hmm. And I've wondered, is this something that I inherited? Because I came the same way. I came the same way. Uh, at least my dad spoke English because my dad also had emigrated to South Africa. But uh, is this something that is in me because it's a Lebanese quality or is this something it's in me because I need to survive economically? Uh, and I don't have the answer to that, but I'm convinced that whatever the Lebanese have done in the world outside of Lebanon. They have done because of the culture, because of the way we were brought up, because of the suffering under so many empires, particularly the Ottoman Empire, and we have been endowed with a spirit to go on. And uh, I think the proudest character of a Lebanese is that we don't give up. Indeed. Even when we fail, we come back again. And look what we've done. Just look in America. We are captains of industries. We are executive officers okay. of major corporations. We are uh, re world-renowned doctors. Uh, we, we, are, we have Lebanese who are so far advanced of every scientist that they are putting little trucks and little cars on, on, on Mars. Mars. Yeah. Uh, and these are Lebanese. And we are proud of them. Absolutely. We are proud to be Lebanese. Now, that's the good side of the Lebanese yeah. character. The other side of the Lebanese character, which I've lived with in Los Angeles, is that we're lone wolves. We are divisive more than we are unifying. Even we are individualist. Even outside Lebanon. Yes, more so, sometimes more so outside Lebanon. Mm -hmm. uh, that we have a tendency to be a lone wolf, in other words, to just concentrate on, on our, our selfishness and not, we do a lot of charity, we, 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 but we don't act as a team. It's difficult for a Lebanese to be a team player. You're right. He, he'd be a good tennis player, but not a good football player. <laughs> and that's, we can't be perfect, but we're great people. القاضي جيمس كادو عنده تعلق وحب شديد لاولاده واكثر من هيك لاولاد اولاده ايضا ورح نتعرف كمان على جيمس كادو اللبناني الاصيل بس من بعد هالبريك I know that uh, you travel to Lebanon once every year. Without fail. Without fail. And maybe you are the only one who is still so much attached uh, among the ones I interviewed, yeah. I mean. Uh, why do you go every year? And uh, uh, did you ever think about maybe uh, founding something like that, like a, a new organization there? 
to help more Liban Lebanese people in Lebanon? You take opportunities where you find them. But America, I love America because gave me an opportunity that I could never have had anywhere else in the world. Uh, but America does not give you the full measure of emotional satisfaction, interaction with human beings. America is a good place to come and work, but there's no social life in America. I go to Lebanon every year because I need to, if I don't, my roots will shrivel mm -hmm. and die. I go back to Lebanon every year so that all my friends can take a vacation from whatever work they do to spend that month and a half with me. They close their offices, they leave <laughs> their work, they don't work in the bank, whatever they're doing, uh, they come just so we can Spend enjoy each other time, yeah. and relax and play cards uh, and joke with each other and make fun of each other. And then I come back a month and a half and I'm so filled up uh, with, with enjoyment of life that I don't have here. Mm -hmm. So I share myself with, with my two heritages, the, the Lebanese heritage and the American heritage. And they blend well. Yeah. They blend well. But I can't take, I don't think I could live in Lebanon uh, because there are many, many injustices mm. that you cannot cure. And, and I'm a and judge. Being a judge and I is love, very and difficult. I love, I have, my job is to cure an injustice, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at least try. Uh, and by the same token, if socially and culturally, if I don't go back to Lebanon and visit my family and visit my friends, uh, I feel empty. I understand. I feel empty. And I don't want to be empty. No. Anyways, uh, I know that uh, you are a great judge, but I discovered that you are a great person. And this is uh, a great Lebanese. Uh, Lebanese in the heart. They all, they all go together. Uh, all go I've together. always, uh, whenever I, I meet with my American friends or whenever I've attended conferences, whenever I've been invited to talk, I've always said, that Lebanese makes a great American because we are law abiding. We behave much better in this country than we do in Lebanon. Yeah, I know. Uh, There's we, something in the air. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, we, we conform. We, we understand because we, we are very smart people. We understand that what we have in Lebanon doesn't work here. So we adapt very mm. quickly. Mm. We adapt very quickly. Uh, but the, the Lebanese all over America, uh, I'm, I'm so proud of them. Uh, even our forefathers who, who gave us, who really were the pioneers, who gave us the trail to follow. And uh, if it weren't for them, uh, maybe we would, the Americans wouldn't know what Lebanon is or what the Lebanese are. And we are, especially in Los Angeles, because Los Angeles is so diverse. It reminds me very much of Lebanon, yeah. except in Lebanon we're diverse religiously. Yeah. Here we're, we're diverse ethnically, uh, but the Lebanese have achieved a great deal, thanks to gentlemen you interviewed this afternoon, Dennis Zine. Uh, the Lebanese have now be become part of the system uh, at the highest level of government. You know, Indeed. we have Secretary of Transportation, Ray Lahoud. Yeah. Uh, so we have adopted to the system. We're, we're part of the system but we don't put in the effort, the sufficient effort, to really succeed even more Indeed. in the system. But we're a, we're a great people, and we, have, we should always hold our head high, because no matter where the Lebanese are, they will always shine. That's, I have faith. I have faith in that. We have to. Thank you. Uh, Judge uh, James Caddo, it was a pleasure uh, talking to you and uh, hope to see you very soon in Lebanon. Without fail. <laughs> Without fail. To Karamainik. Thank you. And I want to thank you very much uh, to let me empty my chest. <laughs> these, are, these are things that I've always had uh, that I, I, was, I never thought I would 
have to come out and say them, but thank you for your for the questions and giving me the opportunity to express uh, my feelings. Perhaps I'm too emotional right now, but it's it comes from the heart and it's also from the brain yeah. because I have to put them in words <laughs> and, and these are the most beautiful words I could think of and, and I owe all that to you. I'm Thank so you, it was a great you. pleasure. Thank Allah you. Thank Thank you. you. Our final speaker came over here from Beirut, Lebanon for the American dream and he is a classic example of one who's ascended and lives the American dream, the Honorable Judge James Cato, Los Angeles Superior Courts. Mr. President, Honorable Council Members, I want to thank you on behalf of the Lebanese American community of Los Angeles as the elder statement, also the public official whose campaign costs more than all of you. Uh, on behalf of our community, we are grateful to you. Today, uh, you cause us to be embodied in the dreams and aspirations that we had as immigrants when we came to this great country and we came to this great city. For us Americans of Lebanese descent, Beirut and Los Angeles have always been sister cities. Our forefathers left Beirut and we were received with open arms in Los Angeles. So we have been as Americans of Lebanese descent, members of the sister cities. And it's very kind of you today to make it very official. In the end of the day, we took a lot of important steps. It is the protection of the social, the social, and the social. After the day, after the day, after the day, القاضي جيمس كادو اللي بيزور لبنان مرة بالسنة ليستمد طاقته ويقدر يعطي أكثر للجيل اللبنانية الموجودة بلوس أنجلوس ورسالته الأهم هي إنه الشعب اللبناني لازم يضل موحد ومش مقصوم revoir cette émission et pour plus d'infos, visitez notre site internet www.mtv.com.lb.